Hi, I'm Dr. Kayla Daniel, the Naughty Nutritionist, here to talk with you today about soy and your thyroid, and soy as a cause of weight gain and obesity. Now, how can that be? Soy is so heavily marketed as a health food. Well, indeed it is, and we find it in many, many popular weight loss products too. But here's the thing, factory farmers use it to fatten up animals as quickly as possible because they don't care if the animal is healthy and happy, they only want it fat as quickly as possible. So the fact that soy ingredients are in more than 60% of processed and packaged foods and nearly 100% of fast foods that very well might have a whole lot to do with America's epidemic of obesity and is sure not going to help us if we're actually trying to lose weight. So why is soy so hard on the thyroid? Well, let's start with the fact that there are more than 70 years of studies linking soy to hypothyroidism and other thyroid disorders. And most often the symptoms we see include lethargy, fatigue, malaise, and thinning hair, brain fog, and yeah, loss of libido. Soybeans contain goitrogens, which have an adverse effect on the thyroid and can cause goiter, which is a telltale swelling on the neck, a pain in the neck, that is a pretty strong sign that you've got thyroid disease. But here's the thing, not everybody with hypothyroidism and other thyroid disorders has that goiter. So there are other symptoms to be looking for as well. But in terms of goitrogen, soybeans are the food that people are most likely to overeat that have goitrogens. Now goitrogens, of course, are in many other foods as well, including cruciferous vegetables and healthy things like broccoli and kale and cabbage, for example. But the thing is, normal processing methods for soybeans are not going to deactivate the goitrogens, and because there are so many people who are now using soy as both meat and dairy replacements, the, the possibility of eating excessively of soy is great. Very few people, after all, are overdosing day after day on cabbage and broccoli, and most of them aren't eating it raw. And the cooking will help deactivate the goitrogens in most other food substances. Now, some people believe that if you've got enough iodine, you're not going to have a problem with soy in your thyroid. Well, here's the thing. Even if you're replete in iodine, which of course many, many people today are not, soy can still bollocks your thyroid. It is going to put it at risk. So how exactly is soy going to hurt your thyroid? Good question. There's a lot of debate about exactly how that happens, but most scientists agree that the culprit is the isoflavins, the phytoestrogens, and think they interfere with thyroid peroxidase, that little enzyme that we need to synthesize the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. So if you'd like to learn more, my book is The Whole Soy Story, The Dark Side of America's Favorite Health Food. I'm Dr. Kayla Daniel, the naughty nutritionist and a pain in the neck to the soy industry. If this video has been helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel right now because there will be many, many more episodes where I expose the dirty little secrets of the food processing industry.